it's all about being in the in crowd. And um, I've been reflecting about this, you know, and sociologists will have a field day about it. Yeah, at Bell Labs, they, um, of course, were the computing science research section. They could afford their own computers. But I think even there, they liked the idea that it was their computer and it wasn't the computing center's computer, although there was one. Let me go way back to the 60s and 70s when uh, multi-user computing came on the scene, even here at Nottingham. It was batch, it was cards and paper tape in those days that we called it. But, of course, the university had to make quite sure that your username reflected a fair bit about you, so they could categorise you. I remember, I think, I was PMZDFB. P. Pure Science Faculty. M. Mathematics Department, Z, don't know, ask me why, member of academic staff, DFB, six characters. We were all like that. But when we could afford our first unit's computer, we thought, we can be like Bell Labs. I can be just DFB. We're in with the in crowd. We've got our own computer and it's all ours. I'm sure that was an awful lot of what was being reflected in that. If you say BWK, way over 90% of a computer science audience will tell you who that person is. But I've checked back with Brian about this and I said, well, was it always initials? Because I know in North America, you know, first name, middle initial, surname is very common. He said, well, almost always. And I said, well, what about Ken Thompson then? He's Ken, isn't he? And it was more or less, Dave, are you going to tell Ken he can't be Ken? No, apparently Ken, because he was so early on, was on Multics, not just on Unix and absolutely ground zero multi-user system and which he was helping to design, he was Ken. And that was allowed, you see. So uh, I think the rule came about that if you'd got a short first name, then fine, that might be used as well. So that was part of the whole thinking behind all this. And I guess the next question I asked Brian, because I know how it evolved here, was were you allowed to have more than three letters? And he said, oh yeah, yeah. There's a guy, I think, uh, his surname was Chesney. He was always Ches. No problem, you know. And <clears throat> so, oh, and Rob Pike, I think, was allowed to be Rob, you see. The, it, and I said, well, did anybody pull rank and say, I'm senior, I want that. And again, according to Brian, no, no, it was first come, first served. If you got the... Uh, if you got the acronym, then that was yours. So it started me off on thinking, well, if I'd only been fortunate enough to stay longer at Bell Labs in my brief visit in 1986, I didn't stay long enough, but if I could only have had a username, could I have been DFB at Bell Labs? And the answer is yes. But here's the sad story. Dr. Heartbleed. He's SRB. So I said to Brian, how about SRB at Bell Labs? Sorry, Steve, he said, it's gone already. Steve Bourne, inventor of the Bourne shell. We'd have had to find something else. When you think about it, you can see some of the perils and pitfalls in this. Um, what about if two people have very nearly the same three letter codes, but not quite, and you accidentally send the wrong email to the wrong person? That has happened to me with Steve a few times. In fact, the two Steves that are a bit ambiguous are both on computer file. Steve Bagley is SRB, Steve Benford of blogging guitar fame is SDB. And <laughs> Uh, I have from time to time had a baffled visit from SDB saying, what on earth do I know about <laughs> document engineering or something like this? The virtue was of these very simple three letter names <clears throat> was you've got to remember, you're back in the days of dumb terminals here. Pretty well keyboard, character driven terminals. What you type is what you get. It could have auto-completed, but that would have been in its infancy. The idea of auto-completion and yes, then you can click on it. No, that had to come in the future. That came in with graphics terminals, later Unix, Windows, Macs, all that. So there you are out in a visiting Bell Labs. You've got a dumb terminal. You want to send somebody an, e an email, being able to type whatever you would be, SAR at something easy to type, that mattered a lot. I still routinely type three letter 
acronyms to get through to people on email. Unless I'm replying to something, of course, then, then, it, then that's all automated. It's not just computer scientists, although we're probably the worst about it. But as you know, in high school teaching, in, uh, in any organisation where somebody's trying to say who's in charge of this item on the agenda, who's the person responsible, rather than writing a full name, you'll often just put three initials at the bottom. Again, it's in the in crowd. We board members know who each other are and ABC is in charge of this particular matter. When we come to doing our grading sheets, our mark sheets here every year, and we look at each student's individual performance, there's always a little bit added on in the corner, the three letter login name of the academic member of staff responsible for that student. And that helps enormously. What happens if you've got uh, um, uh, initials that don't really, uh, let's say they're not, they're not something you want to be known as. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> there, there, are, there are some rude examples of this, but let, yeah. let's try one that isn't maybe so Well, I, um, I know that many of the viewers here uh, are very familiar with things like GitHub. Now, I know what Git means, and I wondered, well, is there some other kind of more universal meaning of, of, of Git than that. And I looked it up and it, it says on Wikipedia, no less, that Git is a, a UK inspired prefix for a person who's just very, very annoying, which is true. I don't think there's any other meaning behind the Git in GitHub other than that. So, you know, somebody called jo George Ian Taylor might not like having the three letter acronym Git. The, other th the only other thing I think we haven't covered is what happens with people that have only got two initials, yeah? Now, apparently at Bell Labs, Brian tells me that Tom Duff, who is really famous, fabulous computer graphics guy, and everybody, the inventor of Duff's device. Look it up. I might even do a separate video on that at some stage. Uh, yeah, Tom Duff, so famous. He was just allowed to be TD. Now, that's amazed me because my dad, and we can refer back to YouTube videos again, when he was with his Type X machine out in the field, he had to have US Air Force accreditation because he was reporting a cipher clock to the US Air Force. He got his documentation. You know what it said at the top? Frank, NMI, Brailsford. So what does NMI stand for? Uh, no middle, middle initial. initial, yes. <laughs> so, you know, I'm surprised to find that Tom Duff has no middle initial. I'm not saying it's quite unique in North America, but there we go. I would have thought perhaps lots of systems required that had to be this, of the same format. Yes. Um, again, you know, in asking Brian about this as background to all of this, he points out that th there was a sort of feeling that maybe not going beyond four would be a good thing because, again, it's a thing where we hope to get on in, onto in other videos. There were some weird word lengths in early computers. And, for example, I remember that on the ICL series computers, there were six-bit characters, not eight-bit characters, and 24-bit integer words. So four characters, four sixes of 24, would fit into one word on a computer like that. Uh, I think um, he said similarly, one of the machines he was on, uh, it was fine to have up to six characters. It was all efficient because 6.6 is a 36. It was a 36-bit machine. So those kind of considerations, because we're computer scientists, were background factors as well. Should we set a quiz, right? Um, just a little quiz. Who can be the first commenter, not to say first, but to tell you, Sean, the answer to the following question. Who is D-E-K? Any clues? Is he a bit... Um, I don't want to give too many clues except to say he's a computer scientist, yes? And a second and rather harder one, another very famous computer scientist who was at Bell Labs, but is no longer there but he's very famous, and it's a he. His acronym at Bell Labs was A-V-A, and it's not female, it's male, it's not a surname. He was A-V-A. Who's that? Good. I hope these aren't just available on Google and people are just Google. Oh, they might do. They <laughs> might be. I don't know. So my dad went up after the talk, introduced himself. It was the first time he met Freddie since he was threatened with instant death, I think. Freddie's wonderful handwriting, you know, what does it say?